In this video, I will be talking about the maximum and minimum points of quadratic equations, and I will be showing you how to solve them using two different methods. The second method is completing the square, and I'll go over that in more detail in a future video. For now, I'll just tell you what the concept is and just give you a general idea of what you need to know. So let's say for any equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, we know that there will either be a maximum or minimum point. So when there's a minimum point, it will look something like this, where this is our minimum point. And if there's a maximum point, it will look something like this, where this is our maximum point. And one way through which we tell whether there will be a maximum point or a minimum point is based on the value or the sign of the coefficient a. So if a is positive, so if a is greater than zero, then we'll have a minimum point. So this is our minimum and if a is less than zero, so if a is negative, then we have a maximum point. Now one very easy way to remember this is that when a is positive, we have a smiley face, and when a is negative, we have a frowny face. So when the coefficient of a, so when a is positive, then our graph is happy, so there is a minimum point. But anyway, let's move on to the methods of solving for the maximum and minimum points of quadratic equations. So the first method is by solving for the line of symmetry. I'll explain to you what this is using a visual example. So in any given quadratic equation, let's say this one or this one, I'm not gonna assign any values to it, there's a line of symmetry which runs down the center. And what that essentially means is that our graph of, or our quadratic equation can be reflected inside of the line of symmetry. So that means that the distance from here to this point is the same as the distance from here to the corresponding point on the other side of the line of symmetry. And using or finding the line of symmetry proves to be very useful when we're solving for maximum or minimum points because they always run through the maximum or minimum point of our curve. So let's look at an example of a question for which we have to solve for either the maximum or minimum point. So let's say that we have, let me scroll down here, x squared plus 4x minus 5. And we have to find either the maximum or minimum point. Well, straight off the bat, we can tell that it's going to have a minimum point, And that's because the coefficient of x squared is one, which is greater than zero. So we know that we're solving for a minimum point. Now for this question, I'm just gonna sketch, draw out the graph so that we have a, so you have an idea of what we're trying to solve for over here. So we have our axes. This is our y-axis and this is our x-axis and then we have our graph which looks something like this going up on both sides. Now the way that we solve for the line of symmetry is we find two points on the curve with the same or with the same y-value so in this case we'd be looking at the point of intersection along the x-axis so where the y-value is zero so we'd be trying to solve for these two points and the line of symmetry, which looks something like this, would be right in between them. So at our intercepts, y is equal to 0, which is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 5. We have minus 5 over here. We can use minus 1 and 5. So x squared um, minus x plus 5x minus 5 is equal to 0 x times x minus 1 plus 5 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. x plus 5 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. From this, we get two possible values of x. We get x is either equal to negative 5 or x is equal to 1. And in both cases, y is equal to 0. So let's mark that up on our graph. Here we have the value of 1, and here we have the value of 
negative 5. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the line of symmetry runs directly in between these two points. So the distance from, say, here to here will be the same as the distance from here to here. So right off the bat, we can tell that minus 5 and 1 are 6 points apart, because this here is 5 units, and then this right here is one more unit. So they're 6 units apart. That means that the point in between them is 3 units apart from both of them. So they're 6 units apart, and the point in between them is 3 units apart from both of them. So 3 units apart from, or 3 units away from negative 5 is right here, negative 2, negative 2, and 3 units away from negative 1 is also negative 2. So we know that our line of symmetry, so our line of symmetry, runs through, or it actually is, the line x is equal to negative 2. So as you can see, there's a line that's already been made running through the or running through the point x is equal to negative 2. And as I mentioned earlier, we also know that the minimum point is touching this value or this line of symmetry. So the minimum point touches the value that we have of x is equal to negative 2. So we have the x value of our minimum point, so it's minus 2 something. And to find the y value, we simply plug negative 2 into our equation. So we get y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 5. Let's box this off. So we get y is equal to negative 2 squared plus negative 2 times 4 minus 5. This gives us 4 minus 8 minus 5, which gives us a value of negative 9. So the y value of our uh, minimum point is negative 9. Let's write this out as our final answer. The minimum point, point of our curve is at the point minus 2 minus 9. So just in review, what we did was we found the line of symmetry using our points of intersection and using that we found the minimum point of our curve because we know that the minimum point runs through or the line of symmetry runs through the minimum point of our curve. Now the second method which I mentioned before and as I said I won't be going into much depth about of solving for the maximum or minimum point is by completing the square. So by completing the square. Now what that is, is essentially we have our equation ax squared plus bx plus c, and we rewrite it using methods that I'll explain in my next video in the form of a times x minus h whole squared plus k. So we originally had this equation of ours, and from that we got a times x minus h squared plus k. And from this, we get the minimum point, or we get the minimum or maximum point as h, k. So we just rewrite it as this, for basically because it's convenient, as it essentially just writes out what the minimum or maximum point of our curve is. So just as an example of this, let's say that we have our equation x squared minus 2x plus 4. We perform the necessary operations and we get it in the form of x minus 1 squared plus 3. Then the value of our minimum point, and I know it's minimum in this case because the value of a is greater than 0, so the value of our minimum point is 1 3. So this is our minimum point. And it's also important to note that inside of this equation, this minus sign is very important and it's where a lot of students often mess up. So let's say if we had the equ equation x plus 2 squared plus 3 
then our minimum point in this case would not be 2, 3. It would actually be negative 2, 3. And that's because this equation is the same thing as x minus negative 2 squared plus 3. And once again, this negative sign, this minus sign, is a very important part of our equation.